you're looking at this face and listening to this voice, you are officially tuned in to the best kept secret in sports talk. I'm your friendly neighborhood. You know what? I ain't going to be friendly today. I'm going to go ahead and take the gloves off. Yeah, so I, I'm smoked. Damn it. <laughs> you are tuned in to the hot seat. What do we do on the hot seat? Man, y'all already know. Say it with me. We set somebody's ass on fire. And who are we setting on fire this week? It's going to be the FSU fan base. Yep, we need to have another conversation. So y'all bring, as a family, of course, y'all bring y'all ass and sit down, man. We need to talk. So without any further ado, man, paying homage to the ghost on my left and my right. Hey, man, let's get to it. I know why you here. You come for the gospel. God damn it, I'm going to give it to you. Ding, ding, class in session, baby. So, you know what? I pride myself on giving you all content with substance. I mean, I just don't want to come in here and talk to you all about nothing. And with the quarantine going on, by the way, I hope and pray that all of you are safe. I hope and pray that all of you are doing well and you will continue to do well. In the meantime, stay at home, guys. Until they can rectify this issue and get this thing under wraps, stay at home. But I always want to have a conversation with you all about something it doesn't even have to be prevalent, but just something that, you know, I think that we need to discuss, right? Or something I just want to get off my chest. There hasn't been anything to talk about lately, right? I knew it. If I just stuck around long enough, Lord, the state was going to give me something. And voila, here I am. So, over the past, listen, I'm on all the message boards, right? Any publication that's tied to the university, I'm with it, right? So, with the quarantine, me working from home, I have a lot of free time on my hands, so I'm probably on these message boards more than I normally am. I never say anything, though. I'm, I just read them because this is like pure entertainment to hear you, to read you all's opinions and comments, and especially see y'all argue with each other. That shit there is pure fucking gold. That's entertainment at its finest. But I never say anything. I just read, right? Just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. So I'm on the message boards, and I'm reading something I think that's had an uptick here in the past week or so. And it's about recruiting, but not just about recruiting, but about how bad recruiting actually is, right? And I'm thinking, well, shit, who the fuck is talking about how bad recruiting is in May? You know, but hey, nothing else is going on. There's nothing else to talk about. Might as well pound on that shit, right? Okay, well, fuck it. You know what? They'll talk themselves to death here in a day or so, and they'll find something else to talk about, right? Nope. Kept going. And here we are, whatever day of the week this is, whatever day of the month this is, you know, having a conversation about recruiting in April. It's spilled over into the month of May. And I'm thinking, when is this shit going to go away? So it led me to get on here and um, tell you all a secret. Um, and clearly it's a secret that a lot of people don't know about, which I guess that's why it's a secret, right? But who better to tell you than myself? So... Brace yourself. Florida State fucking sucks. Said it. Sorry. Somebody had to say it. Clearly nobody knows that this program is trash right now. Florida State is a trash-ass program. I said it. Boom. Yeah. Florida State trash. You know what happens when you're a trash program? You know what happens when you fucking suck? When your foot, in most cases, and I'm willing to bet at least 90%, when you suck at football, you suck at recruiting. Say this again. When you suck at football, your, your, your recruiting mirrors what you do on the field. That's usually how it happens. And for the last three goddamn seasons, Florida State has been absolutely nothing to talk about. Not a goddamn thing. Of course nobody do that but me. And maybe a few other people, right? It had to have been based off the conversations you all are having with each other. Some of you all are just, I don't know, maybe it's me, right? Maybe I'm too connected to reality. Maybe I'm too blind about what's actually in front of me to see and, and make sense of things. Because some of you all act as if you, you all are so quick to compare, you know, whether it be player to player, present, past, future, whatever. You all are so quick to compare shit. And here you are. Well, look at Tennessee. Tennessee fucking sucks. And they're able... Shut up. Shut your ass I, I throw this... This ain't supposed to be up here. 
shut up. Tennessee doesn't fucking suck. If they do, they don't suck as worse as Florida State does. Tennessee went 8-5 and five last year. And all of a sudden, they have an influx of talent, right? They had a few commits over here in the last few days, and it seems like more to come, right? You want, you want Florida State to get some of that juice. I do, too. You want to know what's different at Florida State than it is at Tennessee? Somebody got tired. Yeah. Somebody got tired. Well, what do you mean somebody got tired? Since 1999, how many coaches have Tennessee ran through? Three, maybe four. I think three. Uh, somebody got tired of wilding in the mediocrity. Somebody got tired of being inconsistent. Somebody got tired of fucking sucking. You know what? Somebody decided to buy in. Somebody decided to change shit. Take Georgia, for example. Somebody got tired over there. After Mark Rick left, somebody decided to have a conversation. We're here. They've always been a respectable program. We're here. We want to get here. How the hell do we get here? Somebody bought in. That's exactly what you see at Tennessee right now. I don't know what transpired to make this happen, but it happens more often than not. Even in Alabama. Some, after Gene Stallings left, they ran through about three coaches. Somebody got fucking tired. They got tired to the tune of eight years and $32 million. That was Nick Saban's first contract at Alabama. Now, go, don't be a prisoner of the moment. Go back and ask yourself for a coach who was in the NFL coming off a 6-10 and 10 season with Miami. How the hell does that warrant eight years, $32 million? Because they knew he could get the motherfucking job done. And they knew what it would take to get him away from the NFL. You see how that works? LSU. I'm from Louisiana. I know people tied to the program. I know a father of a very prominent player there who just graduated a year or two ago. Somebody got tired. They bought in. I'm tired of losing to Alabama every fucking year. What do we need to be successful? Somebody bought in. That's what you see going on in Tennessee right now. Don't compare the two. Tennessee has an infrastructure that is – you got a championship coach. You have a championship head coach who's been who's won at a championship level as an assistant at a few stops. You all are very familiar with him. He understands what it takes to win. He understands what it takes to get to the promised land. And I don't know if they were in wait and see mode or they just wanted to see some level of attraction with him. They probably wanted to see if maybe they have the right guy. Whatever it is, maybe 8-5 and five was good enough for them. Because I think Jim Recruiter, not only a really good coach, I think he's an elite recruiter. It was just going to, to me, I thought it was a, a home run hire. And I thought it was just going to be a matter of time before the ball got rolling. He was going to get Tennessee back to where it needed to be. Uh, he's not there, but he's damn sure on the right goddamn track. Don't compare Florida State to that. Florida State is not that. And I'm not saying Florida State is going to have to lose or be inconsistent for the next 12 to 10 to 12 years to get there. I hope not. I'm telling you that Florida State isn't there currently. It's May, people. Like, goddamn. Give Norvell a break. And I shouldn't even be in here defending him because, again, I've told y'all I'm in wait and see mode. You, you, can't, you can't have it both ways because you have kids who will tell you, I like Florida State. I'm interested in Florida State. God forbid they say Florida State is their dream school. A lot of times in some form or another, it's followed by, I just want to wait and see what they do on the football field. They've been saying that for the last two years. What has Florida State done on the football field in the last two years? So why in the hell would they come? Why? Which is a great transition. This is a great segue to the topic of why we're here. Odell Hagens. It seems like when shit is slow and there's nothing to talk about, Man, let's just throw Odell Hagers up against the goddamn wall and see if the shit sticks. Let's just blame every fucking thing on Odell Hagens. People, what? I don't get paid enough for this shit. I don't get paid at all. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. Odell isn't recruiting up to the standards in which you would like for him to for his position in which he coaches, which is the defensive tackle position, right? Okay. Okay. That's fair. Until you start peeling back the onions and looking at the layers to this shit. I had a conversation with somebody earlier, with somebody who I have an immense amount of respect for, and somebody who's actually closely tied to the program, who who knows the players, he's at all the practices, he had, he's been able to lay eyes on Odell Hagens, and he has like a lot of behind-the-scenes info. He trickles down to me. And we were just having a conversation, and I asked him, like, hey, do you think Odell Hagens, do you still think he should be fired? He said, yeah. And I asked him why, and he told me. He brought up some interesting points, some that I couldn't dispute. But I think everything deserves a proper context. And, I, and, and here's, the, here's the context in which I think the Fire Odell Hagen thing should be placed in. I'm not going to dispute the fact that he is a recruiting at a level in which we all would like, right? Because we all want to see blue chip, especially in the trenches, you want to see as many blue chip athletes as you can get, right? Let's pause for a second. Let's look at the term blue chip athlete. Back in the day, <laughs> and I'm saying this shit like I'm 60 years old, I'm only 38. Back then, a blue chip athlete was a top tier athlete. It seems as if the, the definition of that has now been remixed. And is anybody, if this is again for the for the stargazers, is anybody with a con, with a composite score that, that turns out to be a four star athlete, right? That's a blue chip athlete. Okay, I'm fine with that. Let's keep moving. He's not bringing in enough four and five star talent, right? You you look at the number of defensive tackles that were ranked four star better in the 2020 cycle. It's about 38 of them. The person whom I was speaking with brought up the fact that, you know, Ron Dugans is at a shitty ass school as well, but he keeps churning in blue star talent. He keeps bringing in blue star or wide receivers to Florida State. That person was right. Didn't argue that. When you look at the number of blue star athletes at the wide receiver position in the 2020 cycle, it was over 60. Meaning it's easier to recruit when the pool has more athletes that are a blue chip caliber. Go back and look at probably the top 12 defensive tackles in the, two star, in the 2020 cycle. Go back and look at them. They either went to Clemson or the SEC. What the fuck you want Odell to do with that? Because we definitely don't have the infrastructure and the winning attitude that Clemson has. We definitely don't have SEC money. That's not Odell's fault. He can do nothing with that. Okay, so you look at what he was able to break in. He brought in Manny Rogers. Okay, whoop the fucking do. Nobody wants to give him credit for that. Nobody wants to give him credit for bringing in Damari Tate. Nobody wants to give him credit for doing the best he could as a head coach late in the season to holding holding together the little the little bit left of what we he salvaged what we had as a head coach for that recruiting class. Nobody gives him credit for that. Listen, when you win, you're able to get a better caliber athlete. That goes without saying. When you lose, it's harder to get those athletes to come in. I had to retweet an old video about uh Mike Norvell's first signing class with uh, Florida State. And when I retweeted, I just put the caption that maybe we need to put things again in their proper perspective. Relationships matter. I said in that video that you look at what Mike Norvell was able to do two months in, I thought it was pretty impressive. But when you lose out on a kid who had a relationship built with another school for eight months, 12 months, 15 months, what the hell did you want him to do? Well, you can sit here and tell me that Odell has been tied for a long time to certain kids and he just doesn't win out. Tyler Davis at Clemson was an example I gave. I asked you all then, and I heard crickets. Why in the hell would Tyler Davis come to Florida State over Clemson? I doubt one of y'all to tell me why. Try it. I eat your ass alive. That's a conversation you wouldn't want to have with me. You don't have you you don't you don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. You have no argument there. Let's move on. You people. The last regime, the Willie Taggart era was here. By far, 
the best recruiter was Raymond Woody. The best recruiter was Raymond Woody. He just wasn't that good of a coach. You would go out there, you would see the product, you would see Dontavious Jackson, you would see, uh, I guess to a lesser extent, you would see, and I can't really put this on Jaden Laws Whippin because he was playing out of position, but you would see what we were doing out there at the linebacker position. You all wanted to hang his ass by his fucking ear. And okay, I get it. The product on the field isn't that good. Look around you. He either spearheaded or assisted on most of the blue chip athletes Florida State had at that time and the year before. He was falling away their best recruiter, and you wanted to fire him. Yeah, that made a whole lot of fucking sense. Well, let's flip it. Here we are having a conversation about Odell Hagens. We can have a conversation about his recruiting, right? What we cannot have a conversation about, what you cannot dispute, is the product he has on the goddamn football field. Fred Jones is on the NFL roster. DeMarcus Christmas is on an NFL roster. Derek Nottie is on an NFL roster. There's a great chance that Corey Durden is going to get drafted by an NFL team. There's a great chance that Robert Cooper is going to get drafted by an NFL team. There's a more than great chance that Marvin Wilson is going to get drafted in the first round by the NFL team. He gets players in, five-star, four-star, negative 13-star, whatever. He gets them to perform above their grade. He's a really, really good coach. You are talking about firing a man, and you have nobody to bring in to replace him. Nobody. Nobody who's going to be as good as he is as a coach to go in there and say, hey, you know what? I don't have much, but I'm going to make sugar out of shit. I'm going to give you the best. I'm going to give you the best version of what I have to work with. Fire him. Okay, fuck it. Fire him. You already have a re- you, you you have an admin and a booster that is telling you we're not going to spend a whole lot of money. So who the hell are you going to bring in of some who has some type of resume that would either rival or exceed Odell Hagens? Who are you going to bring in? I'll wait. That's what the fuck I thought. Nobody. You ain't going out bid no goddamn body. That ain't what Florida State doing right now. You kiss my grits. Florida State not doing that shit. So since they're not, you might want to have a nice tall glass and shut the fuck up. I don't see a... I, Fred Jones was not supposed to be as productive as he was in 2018. He was not supposed to be as good as he was. And the only reason why his production slipped was because he started sharing snaps with Marvin the more healthy Marvin got. Had DeMar- the only reason why DeMarcus Christmas, the only reason why his stock dropped in 2018 is because Florida State was a fucking trash ass team. He should have went his junior year into the draft. He would have gotten drafted even higher. Jalen Parks was the guy we were all excited about at the defensive tackle position when he came to campus. It wasn't Corey Dirt. A lot of us even questioned if Dirt was going to touch the field. Now look at it. You can't replace good coaching people. There is no substitute for it. And you can tell me that, you know what? You haven't said a lot about Marvin because you can't. Marvin's a five-star. That fuck I can't. Listen, man. (laughs) For one reason or another, in the last three to four years, Florida State has had their share of five-star athletes that didn't pan out to do a goddamn thing. And I'm not pointing any fingers or blaming any goddamn body because I want to see all these kids succeed but they haven't done well. So to say that he was going to be good because he was a five-star isn't fair to Marvin Wilson, and it isn't fair, more importantly, to Odell Hagens. You can't substitute great coaching. Say what you will about his recruiting, but he is an above-average coach. He is one of the best defensive tackle coaches in the goddamn country. Jimbo wanted him when he left. Saban wanted him. Those coaches don't just want anybody. They want elite. They want the best of the best. That's what Odell Higgins is. And you mean to tell me because he's not bringing in people that he can't bring in, you want to fire him? Man, if you don't get your goddamn ass out of here with this shit.
I understand there's nothing to do. There's nothing to talk about. You got fingers and they need to be pointed at somebody. Cut them motherfuckers off. Because you point them at the wrong person. You want Odell Hagens at trash ass Florida State to compete with the SEC and to compete with Clemson. Say this again. <laughs> you want Odell Hagens at trash ass FSU to compete with the SEC and to compete with Clemson. That's not fair. That's not fucking fair, people. Your expectations are exceeding reality when we have these conversations. That's not fucking fair. No, the answer is not to fire Odell Hagens. The answer is to put a product on the field that shows that Florida State is a program trending in the right direction and the goddamn position at that school will recruit itself. Look at what he was able to recruit when Florida State was winning. Recruiting in the trenches is vastly different from recruiting at any other position. You can bring in a decent four-star quarterback at a trash-ass goddamn school if all the things align at that time. A wide receiver, a running back even. It's hard to do it with the trenches because there were so few of those athletes. Those athletes usually go towards where the money is or where the winning is, if not both. Florida State not giving up no goddamn money, and they damn sure ain't doing no goddamn winning right now. Stop asking this man to do the impossible. Stop asking him to walk on water and piss out gold. You can't, you, who the hell would, what, if you want to replace him, give me somebody to replace him with. Who do you know that's going to come in here and recruit at a high level at that position where the pool of players is so small and give you the product you want and still be able to go out here and get these guys to perform, if not, at the, at the rate that they are projected to or higher. Give me somebody. Go ahead. You can't. Trust me, I look for somebody before I turn on that goddamn camera, and I got nothing. At least not for what they would probably be paying, meaning don't come to Florida State and, and take a pay cut. Who the hell is going to come to Florida State and take a pay cut? Somebody did do that, didn't they? He tripping. I don't know any DT coach that's going to do it. I also don't know any DT coaches that are going to come to Florida State and be a better coach and put a better product on the field. You saw what he was able to do in recruiting when Florida State was winning. Start winning, he'll be able to set some of y'all up. I promise you, I, I bet my next five checks to a bucket of shit, he'll be able to set some of y'all up once Florida State starts back winning. Whenever in the hell that'll be. But hope I didn't keep you all too long. Uh, listen, man, jump in these goddamn comments. Tell me why I'm wrong. Give me your facts. Give me everything. Shut my ass up. I want these conversations. I engage in all of them as much as I possibly can. Please, as always, continue to like these videos. Continue to share these videos. And more importantly, subscribe to all the people who actually sit down and actually hit play and watch me. I appreciate you. And even though it sounds cliche, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. Um, Y'all know the routine, man. Till next time. Y'all be good. You are officially off the ice.